Almost 20 years ago today, two buildings were hit by two planes, or so they say. On 9-11-2001, allegedly overrun by hijackers from Saudi Arabia, speeding through the skies with the aim to take lives, hit the Twin Towers, the symbol of America's power. They say by fire they were quickly devoured until they collapsed to the ground within hours. So many questionable details of this account given by those in power, but all questioners they seek to alienate. Doesn't this remind you of how they treat the followers of Ahl al-Bayt when they simply question the history of the Caliphate? God teaches us to ponder, question, investigate, to put forward facts and emotions aside when you deliberate. For in order for you to be free, you must accept the truth, even if it's a hard pill to swallow. You must know your history, to know your today, or you will repeat its mistakes tomorrow. History tells us that the U.S. government has constantly schemed and spread lies that it began from death and destruction, that the famous figures who had done this were glorified and actions were justified, from the enslavement of Africans to Native American genocide. But God always leaves clues to those seeking truth. Oppressors will always slip, leaving behind a trail of proof. And although the details of 9-11 are clouded in doubt and deception, they had already prepared a mass manipulation of public perception. On Saturday, New York officials revealed at a news conference here in the city that a hijacker's passport was found blocks from the World Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. That would not happen. It's very hard to get a visa to enter the United States uh, if your name even sounds like a terrorist. All people were frantic, angry, and scared. War was quickly declared. Before the evidence was gathered and processed, they instantly declared that the culprit was person named Osama bin Laden. And riding the wave of people's emotions, they declared a war on terror overseas, really a war on Islam, hidden between parentheses. If you study the eight steps of genocide, you will quickly realize, against Muslims every step has been actualized. Classification, symbolization, discrimination, dehumanization, organization, polarization, preparation, persecution, extermination, denial. 9-11 made us all guilty, all on trial, because on TV that is how we are portrayed. Like sleeper cells and our fellow citizens, we will betray. What if this is a sleeper cell full of terrorists getting ready to blow up our neighbor? Ignoring the fact that these terrorist groups are almost always funded, armed and trained, by the C I mean, let's I remember A. here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. Military, and let's go recruit these Mujahideen, and let's great, let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places, importing their Wahhabi brand. Of so know that these so-called terrorist groups are nothing more than hit squads in disguise, killing two birds with one stone, allowing the Muslims to be demonized so the West could continue to invade, steal, and imperialize met directly with the top Syrian rebels to make the point that they deserve all the support the United States can, can give. And George, this was with such secrecy. Uh, Does this not remind you of Muawiyah's propaganda in his time? Before speaking a word live, the person on the pulpit would have to curse Ali or risk losing their lives. And then an extremist group called the Khawarij would arise. The reason why Ali would die. Muawiyah pulled the strings from behind while these fanatics did his dirty work on the front lines. So when puppet groups and dictators pop up committing terrorism, yet always have strong ties to Western imperialism, know that the same strategy now applies. Nearly always standing behind radical groups has been a state actor. Founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS, okay? He's the founder. Actor, or an intelligence service or, or, of a state actor. They are not just entirely something that has spontaneously arisen. If you noticed, America has always kept its people in divide and scared, always had a boogeyman. Communism, Vietnam, Islam, Iran. Speaking of Iran, do you know their history besides Fox and CNN headlines? Like how the British exploited Iran before World War I's front lines. And when Iranians were sick of being oppressed by the East, and the West after World War II, when their own prime minister they would elect in their nation, it was America who overthrew Iran's democratic government through covert operations. 
now declassified, look it up online, titled Operation Ajax. Not a conspiracy theory, cold hard facts. When the CIA and MI6 implemented a dictator who was US and UK backed and led by Imam Khomeini, they started a revolution and fought back, but were instantly branded as religious fundamentalists. Ironic that when the American colonists revolted against the British, they are called heroes and patriots, but when people revolt against American imperialists, they are called terrorists. Why is it praise when Patrick Henry said give me liberty or give me death, but for anyone who says that same statement against the US or the West, they are sanctioned, defamed, and criminalized. Defiance today in Iran as the U.S. reimposed some sanctions after President Trump walked away from the nuclear deal. Is it now just like Hussein's time? Standing with the oppressed is seen as a crime. Because after 9-11, anyone seeking to help dying and starving children in Yemen, like Imam Hussein's baby, is prosecuted by the powers of the time. And as they try to convince you what a great crime it is, they did not want you to dig deeper and ask, why this is? Why are the children in Yemen starving in the first place? And why is Iran sanctioned? Why is the US allied with the Saudis if Saudi hijackers attacked our nation? Why is there always some connection between terrorist factions and elements and US, UK, Saudi and Israeli intelligence? Honestly, it's so simple, but it doesn't seem that the world gets it. So let me explain. In order for world powers to control and maintain authority, they must appear to have moral superiority. So they talk about human rights, liberty, justice, freedom, and democracy, but they know full well their words versus their actions define hypocrisy. So on the outside using propaganda, lofty speeches and values, your hearts, they capture and behind the scenes, Syrian they hire is and manufacture for his terror. 9-11 gave a pretext for world domination of the military industrial complex, making coin for coffins, bullets and bombs to explode their bank accounts, using claims that are baseless to expand their bases. ...of investment made by Saudi Arabia to buy product from the United States. And again, we make the best military product in the world, whether it's missiles or planes or anything else, there's nobody that even comes close. So I just want to thank you and I want to congratulate you on everything. Thank you very much. What Trump did not acknowledge is that these billions of dollars of US weapons are being used to massacre Yemeni civilians. Saudi Arabia has used this US military equipment to relentlessly bomb civilian areas in Yemen, including hospitals, schools, residential houses, refugee camps, and even funerals. The US-backed Saudi coalition has killed many thousands of Yemeni civilians, pushed millions more to the brink of famine, unleashed an unprecedented cholera outbreak, and created what the United Nations says is the largest humanitarian catastrophe on Earth. Trump expressed no concern whatsoever over the millions of lives being crushed in Yemen. Nor did he even mention the egregious human rights abuses committed by Saudi Arabia and its de facto leader, Mohammed bin Salman, who has been purging his political rivals, imprisoning human rights activists, and crushing all forms of dissent. Instead, Trump made it clear that his political strategy is to sell weapons and rely on $400 billion of Saudi investment. And the other thing that I really am very happy about is that uh, we talked about 400 billion dollars worth of investment of which and similarly if we look into islamic history the same pattern exists they want you to believe that the prophet's family was not betrayed and rightly guided were all the caliphs but when you put aside emotions and fear you will realize that this history was filled with corruption brutality and propaganda smears otherwise there is no way the grandson of the prophet's head could end up on a spear. Reverse engineer, connect the dots. The battle may have ended, but Karbala has never stopped.